This video is about metals and their properties. Now the first thing that we're going to discuss is where the metals are on the periodic table. And at the moment, as you look at the periodic table, you might be able to recognise certain metals, for example iron, titanium, copper and zinc and magnesium that you either use in the lab at school or that you um, know exist from um, just everyday life. But on the periodic table there's an imaginary line which separates the metals and the non-metals and on this one it's not shown but we're going to draw it in here and you need to know where this line exists. So we start drawing the line between aluminium which is a metal and boron which is a non-metal and it steps down like this to separate the metals which are on the left hand side of this line so everything to the left hand side of the line is a metal and non-metals to the right so metals over here and non-metals on the right if you forget which way around it is you can just look at something that you recognize for example oxygen we can see that this is the right hand side of the line and oxygen is obviously a non-metal whereas things like copper, iron, titanium etc are obvious metals that we know so the metals must be on the left hand side of the line. There are three magnetic metals so it's an, a common misunderstanding that all metals are magnetic in fact only these three iron, cobalt and nickel are magnetic so the rest of the metals that you see in the periodic table are not magnetic. Some metals are found um, just as they are for example gold you can pan for gold even though it's rare you can um, use a sieve in the river and pieces of gold will be found in their pure form. This is because gold's not very reactive it doesn't react um, with other stuff to form for example a, a rock type structure. Other metals are reactive so they react with other things and they're found in an ore and that is for example a rock with metal in it. Okay it's actually got to have enough metal in it to make it um, worthwhile extracting it but that's how a lot of the metals are actually found as an ore whereas some like gold as we discussed are unreactive so they would just be found in their pure form. These ones that are found as an ore so like trapped inside a rock we have to spend quite a lot of money to extract those metals but metals have a lot of different uses um, for example, copper is used in electrical wiring, titanium can be used um, in hip joints and hip replacements, aluminium can be used in aircraft and things like that. But they do have some common properties that we're going to discuss now. First of all, all metals are shiny. And some of the reactive metals won't look shiny when you first take them out. That's because they would have reacted with the oxygen in the air and made an oxide coating on the outside which would make them look dull. But when you cut into the metal you can again see straight away that it's shiny. So metals such as sodium and potassium, if you've ever seen a teacher use those in the lab, they will look slightly dull on the outside but once they cut into the metal they'll look shiny. So that's our first property of metals that they all look shiny. The second one is that they are malleable. Now malleable means that they can bend without breaking. And this is important so that we can bend them and make them into all sorts of different shapes. If you think about the metal that's around the room, they, there are different shapes of metal because we've been able to bend them into different shapes without them breaking. <clears throat> Another property 
is that they make a ringing sound when hit. So we've just got a pair of symbols here um, to try and remind us of that fact that if we hit a metal object it will make a ringing sound whereas a non-metal uh, object would just make a dull sound when hit. So we've got shiny, malleable and make a ringing sound when hit and the final one and perhaps the most important one for us is the fact that they conduct electricity. Okay really really useful obviously for our everyday lives is the fact that metals conduct electricity and it's normally copper that we see in these electrical wires. Now as well as conducting electricity they also conduct heat as well. Okay you might see the word heat or you might see this written as thermal energy. They mean the same thing so you might see it as heat or you might see heat written as thermal energy. So there are our properties of metals and just to recap they are found on the left hand side of the periodic table.